With as much as we have learned about state-run lotteries over the years, you might be surprised to find out that there's a lot more involved with the lottery than what's on the surface. From how revenue is distributed to protecting the anonymity of winners. Today, we take a look at 10 secrets that the people who run the lottery definitely do not want you to know. Before we reveal these mysteries, make sure that you subscribe to the channel to avoid missing out on future mind-blowing videos just like this one. Defined as a type of gambling that involves the random drawing of numbers to win a prize, the lottery has become one of the most popular forms of legal gambling in most states across the US. It wasn't always this way though. Lotteries were commonplace throughout the 19th century, but this changed as we switched over to the 20th century and most gambling across the country became illegal. By the 1960s, the attitudes started changing as local governments began seeing the financial benefits of state-controlled games. It is still taking a little more time for every state in the union to get on board, but given how much money these games tend to rake in for state governments annually, it's really only a matter of time before all states and territories are on board. Now that we have that quick history lesson out of the way, let's jump right in with number 10. Number 10. When employment rises, so do lotto sales. Starting off, we are going to address a correlation that may sound incorrect to some. The United States seems to go through a pretty constant fluctuation when it comes to the employment status of citizens. As the unemployment rate rises, it seems that so do lottery ticket sales. In a study from 1994, Indiana University professor John Mikesell found that lottery sales had a tendency to increase as unemployment rates rose. It's believed that this happens because the struggling people will see playing the lottery as a possible solution for their financial hardship. And the longer a bout of unemployment goes on, the more desperation tends to build amongst those hardest hit. This was backed up by the New York Times in 2008. With the lockdowns in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic, quite a few people found themselves jobless pretty quickly, as not all jobs can be done from home. As we have all witnessed, many have fallen into financial hardship as a result. As lockdowns continued into 2021, the mega millions and Powerball jackpots hit payout amounts into the billions. The idea of having the slightest possibility of making a fortune in no time is super attractive, so people tend to play more. Number 9. Preying on the Poor and Marginalized Based on the information given in the previous entry, it may not be a huge surprise to state that the lottery system as a whole has a big problem with preying on the poorest and least educated among us. The lottery system is known for targeting minorities as well. While this holds true for popular games like Mega Millions, where a broader cross-section of society participates, the poorer segments of society don't always stop there. It's been observed that for these people, if they don't win on those bigger drawings, they will keep playing through all the different types of lotteries available to them, usually concluding with a scratch-off ticket frenzy. Going in with the mentality of the more you play, the more you win, many people don't realize that the act of participating in a lottery stimulates the area of the brain where the addiction lies. There are plenty of myths floating around that unfortunately cause poorer people to chase this particular dragon. One of the biggest ones is that many people believe that playing the lotto is the only way to accumulate any savings. This belief, among others, is what keeps the gambling addiction poverty cycle moving. Number 8. Retailers rely on lottery sales. The COVID-19 pandemic has changed a lot about how we live and conduct various activities, up to and including lottery sales. In multiple states across the country, systems have begun to be implemented or have had full rollouts, which will make it easier for citizens to purchase lottery tickets online. Officials have stated that these changes are essential to keeping the lottery going as the money flowing through the system can help towns and cities financially. These changes can horribly impact the livelihood of the retail businesses that sell the lottery tickets. Not only does moving the lottery system online and the commissions that retailers receive that could be more than $25,000 annually, but the lack of foot traffic through retail locations also reduces the amount of money made in other sales for those locations. Put a bit more simply, fewer people coming into a bodega to buy lottery tickets mean fewer people are buying other items. 
Extrapolate it over almost any amount of time means that the store makes significantly less money overall, leading to the possibility of that store having to close its doors. Number 7. Lottery Scavengers As we have already established, the lottery is something that many people take seriously as a way to change their financial futures. Many of us would do pretty much anything to make financial freedom a reality, even dumpster diving. Over the years, there have been reports of many looking for lottery winnings using methods usually only performed by the homeless. Those that perform this task are known as scroungers. As it turns out, many of us tend to misread lottery tickets and will discard winners without realizing it. This is not really that surprising given how confusing reading many tickets can become. Back in 2005, a Massachusetts man who was known for searching through his town's garbage was rewarded for his patience by finding a $1 million scratch-off ticket. The man's claim to the ticket was disputed by the person who allegedly threw out the ticket by mistake. Not all those who find winning tickets this way have had to defend their ownership. In fact, disputes such as these are pretty few and far between, as many scroungers have had success in finding winners with minimal pushback. Number 6. The Lottery is More Entertaining Than Entertainment According to the North American Association of State and Provincial Lotteries, back during the 2014 fiscal year, there were $70.1 billion in lottery sales across all states where such things are legal, which was 43 at that time. That's roughly $300 per adult in the United States. Of course, the difference in sales state by state varied based on a myriad of factors. For example, during 2014, North Dakota only had $36 in sales total statewide, while Rhode Island had $800 per capita. The entertainment consumption of the entire country, such as movie tickets, books, video games, and sports tickets, hit approximately $63 million that same year. So this means that residents of the states that allow a lottery spent $7 million more than all 50 states did on entertainment as a whole. Truly staggering. Have any of these surprised you so far? Let us know in the comments. Make sure you stick around for number one to find out the most insane secret the lottery doesn't want you knowing. Number five, don't invest in a mask just yet. We are all aware of the possible pitfalls of revealing that you are a lottery winner. Not only would you have to deal with scammers you've never met before trying to get you to invest large sums into shady deals, but you will also have family and friends coming to you for money constantly. This covers people you talk to daily and others you haven't seen in over a decade. The obvious solution for many would be just to remain anonymous, avoiding the usual big reveals and fanfare. Unfortunately, this solution will only work in Delaware, Kansas, Maryland, North Dakota, Ohio, South Carolina, and Texas, as those are the only states with a lottery that allow winners to retain their anonymity. You're not completely out of luck in some of the other states not mentioned, but it will take some work. In this situation, the best thing to do is to get legal representation, form a trust, and let the lawyer do the talking for you. Number 4. The winners still lose sometimes. Most of us would assume that life would instantly become easier after winning millions of dollars in a lottery. That is how the lottery is advertised anyway. Many former lottery winners would probably disagree with that sentiment though, especially those that were accustomed to being poor previous to winning. According to a 2016 report in Forbes, a third of lottery winners end up filing for bankruptcy. On top of that, there are increased rates of other issues among lottery winners including depression, divorce, substance abuse, and suicide. Surprisingly, being overly generous toward loved ones is one of the biggest mistakes that lottery winners make. Many winners do not consider when helping out friends and family financially because you will still have to pay a gift tax after the fact. This is one of the ways many successful lottery players blow through their winnings quicker than they intend. Number 3. The Trouble with Scratch-Offs One of the easiest ways to play the lottery is with scratch-off tickets. The general assumption about scratch-offs that seems pretty ubiquitous is that the chances of winning are much higher due to how small the payouts tend to be. 
This is, of course, not true. And to top that off, the average payout for scratch-off tickets doesn't really make them worth it. As an example, the best payout for a scratch-off ticket in New York State is about 88 cents per dollar. On top of not-so-great returns, scratch-off lottery tickets can be extremely addicting. A lot of money that people end up winning, $5 here or $20 there, goes right back into buying more scratch-offs, diminishing any returns the player did get. Number 2. How winnings are paid is important. Depending on what type of lottery you've won, the way the winnings are paid out can be just as important, if not more important, than how much was won. This is because wins are taxed, with certain places taxing up to 45%. If you do find yourself being the lucky winner of a huge payout, take time to consider things like whether you want a lump sum payment or to be paid over some time, assuming that option is available. It may sound like there's no difference between those, but how much money you end up receiving overall can be substantial. Number 1. Where does the revenue really go? Despite the imbalance of pros versus cons when analyzing how the lottery works, many will still play under the belief that even though they run the risk of losing, the money they spend playing the state-run games will be funneled into government programs. Some examples show this in action. For instance, of the $1.39 billion raised by the California Lottery in 2014, $97 million were allocated to the Los Angeles Unified School District for the upcoming school year. As it turns out, examples such as these are few and far between, as not all states operate the budgets the same way California does. In many cases, the revenue from lottery sales goes into a general state fund, which is then allocated out where the state government deems necessary. In some instances, the money does end up where initially intended, such as funding for environmental causes and education. But more often than not, the majority of the money gets spread out in many ways, with barely any of it ending up where it originally intended. As you can see, playing and winning the lottery is not everything we have dreamt it to be. And this is really just the tip of the iceberg as diving deeper into each of these will reveal even more issues and secrets that we may not even be aware of. Did any of these surprise you? Do you think we missed something crucial? Let us know in the comments. Be sure to tap that like button if you enjoyed this video and hit subscribe if you want to see more of this type of content in your recommendations. Stay wealthy and I'll see you in the next video.